Hi guys. Oh, just so excited about this Christmas season and um, everything that's been going on and just celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus. And that's kind of what our lesson is about today. Um, so let's get started, okay? Um, have you ever had something that you waited a long time for? Um, well, right now, um, I'm recording this on the 23rd of December, so that means tomorrow's Christmas Eve, and I'm sure you're all really excited uh, about Christmas coming and can't wait um, for your family get-togethers and for uh, to open presents and to have a big meal and just celebrate Jesus' birth together. So that sometimes can seem like it'll take forever to get here, doesn't it? Um, so that's, that's something we're waiting for right now. Um, well, there were people in the Bible who had waited a long time for Jesus to come and Jesus to be born. Um, all throughout the Old Testament, uh, it talked about a Messiah coming, someone who would save them, someone who would come save Israel. And um, so they had waited hundreds of years, but there were a couple people um, who had waited, um, who were waiting when Jesus came, and we'll talk about them today. Um, it was exciting when Jesus was born, um, especially for a couple of people um, who were there uh, living on the earth when he was born. I will read you a couple verses about that, okay? Um, oh, there it is. Okay. I'm reading from a different Bible. It's kind of a chronological Bible, so it kind of has things in different areas. This is in Luke, so which is the second book, Matthew, or third book, <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, um, in our New Testament, right? Yeah. All right. So it's in Luke 2 is where it talks about Jesus being born and for them waiting for him. Okay. Um, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, um, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Wow, that's a big promise from God, huh? Does God keep his promises? He sure does, all right? So he was waiting, probably impatiently waiting, to be able to see the Messiah. Um, well, the day came. The Spirit led Simeon to the temple on the very day that Jesus' parents were bringing him to be dedicated. I don't know if maybe some of you have been dedicated at church. When you were just a baby, your parents brought you and said, they were going to dedicate you to the Lord. Um, they were going to leave your life in his hands because you were a gift from him, right? Okay, well, that's what uh, Mary and Joseph were doing with Jesus. They took him to the temple, just like our church, and presented him there. And um, the Lord told Simeon, you be there. You're going to see it. Um, so can you think of a time when... You had to wait for someone to keep a promise, like the one made to Simeon. Now, that's a big one. We probably don't have one that big. <laughs> There's not many that big. But um, but maybe someone uh, made you a promise, and you were waiting for them to keep it. Maybe mom or dad or, or someone else. It can be really hard waiting, can it? Okay. Simeon wasn't the only one waiting for Jesus, though, too. Um, listen to this one. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. 
Wow, so she's been waiting too, huh? Okay. How did waiting for how does waiting for Christmas seem? Or waiting for your promise to be kept seem when compared to how long they had waited? Said that Anna was 84. So she had waited. Oh, these people, they were both older people. And they had waited their entire lives, hadn't they? They had. Um, and Anna knew that a lot of people had been waiting for the special baby. Okay, so when we need help in our lives, we need to wait for Jesus too. Sometimes it's hard to wait. But we do. We wait for him to bring good twists or turns, okay, in our lives right now. Uh, and we wait for him to come back, too. That's actually our new uh, box for this month uh, that we're going to be doing for the next few months. Twists and turns, it's called. So this is one of the twists, okay? Um, when, when Simeon saw Jesus, he said, I have seen your salvation. He knew that Jesus would bring hope to all of our lives in this one little baby. Because what was he coming for? Okay, he wasn't coming to save them from the Romans, which is what they thought, but he was coming to save them from their sins to make it to where we could have that relationship with God. Isn't that awesome? What a, so worth it to be waiting for, right? Yeah. Okay, now, can you think of a place that you've, um, had to wait before, sort of like maybe an amusement park. Okay, oops, I'm getting moved here a little bit. There we go. Sorry about that. Amusement parks. You go and you wait in line to get on a ride, like maybe a roller coaster. Maybe you even wait like three hours to get to go on, and then it's only the 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 ride is only a minute, two, maybe three minutes if you're lucky. Long, all right, but. A lot of times we think the worth is though the wait is worth it, don't we? Because it was so much fun. All right. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But a lot of times we have a lot of fun on them. So, um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you design a roller coaster that you think would be worth a three-hour wait. Okay. I want you to get a partner. Somebody that can help you and um, wants you to take a few minutes to design a ride. Now, you have to agree on the parts of the ride, okay? Um, and either draw your ride or, uh, or be able to describe it, okay, to somebody else. Okay, so go ahead and draw it or describe it, but you both have to agree on the description, agree on the parts. If you want to build a roller coaster with that zips through an underground tunnel at 100 miles per hour, you've both got to agree, okay? So get busy. You've got just a few minutes to design a ride, you ride that you think will be worth a three-hour wait. Then come back here and we'll talk about it, okay? Okay. So hopefully you were able to share that with someone else. Um, or if you're um, going to see me soon, you can show me. I would love to see it. Um, but can you think of something else that in your life that might be worth a three-hour wait? Um, maybe a new brother or sister. That would require more than three hours too, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Birthing babies isn't a short process. <laughs> okay. What's something you'd be willing to wait for a really long time for? Like maybe a brother or sister, right? Um, or maybe something else. Um, what are you waiting for Jesus to do for you? Hmm. Go ahead and talk about those things. Okay, well, here's something that's worth the wait. Jesus showing up. Okay, Jesus will always be there no matter what, no matter what situation we're facing, no matter what happens. The Bible says that even though the mountains be moved, he is going to be there for us. Okay, 
He's got perfect timing for everything that will happen in our lives. And he's coming back someday. Hopefully soon. <laughs> um, when we wait for Jesus, though, we can be sure that it's worth the wait. All right. One more thing. Okay. We wait for Jesus, don't we? Because we know that one day he's coming back to earth. Um, but if you're not doing anything while you're waiting, that can be pretty boring, right? Yeah. It can be like being stuck in the back seat for a long trip with nothing to do. Have you gone on some of those trips? I have. <laughs> Even when I was young, too. I, we made three trips to California before I was seven years old. And they were, and we rode in the car both times, all the way there and all the way back. And so we did take a lot of things to do, but I can just, even then we kind of got bored. And I can just imagine what it would have been, been like if we hadn't brought anything to do. <laughs> okay, but I've got good news. We have things to do, though, while we're waiting for Jesus to come back, right? What's on your waiting or stuff to do while waiting for Jesus list? Um, think of some things that you do every day or that you do while you're waiting for Jesus to come back. Go ahead and make a list, okay? And then come back. The Bible has some ideas of things that we can do while we're waiting for Jesus, but we kind of have to figure out how to do them. So we're going to do that. The Bible says, love each other. What might that look like? Hmm. Maybe you're giving out some presents in the next few days. Sometimes I can't wait for people to see the gifts that I give them. And that's where I really enjoy is giving, going shopping and getting things for people. That is just really awesome. That's something that's hard to wait for too, to see what they're going to, to say. But it says to love each other. And that is one way we can love each other by giving gifts. But we don't have to do that to love people, do we? What are some other things? To show, you, show them that you love them. Maybe doing something for them. Okay. Maybe just giving them a hug when they're having a hard time. Can you think of some more? Okay. Well, if you look in Romans 12. It's a short chapter. Um, that's in your New Testament too. Let's go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, the sixth book in your New Testament. So look that up, and then it's in chapter 12, okay? And why don't you read that together and write down the things real quick as you're reading or have someone write down the things that the Lord tells us we can do that he wants us to be doing, actually, okay? And come back. Okay, well, a few of them include, like verse 11, it says, work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically, excitedly, okay? And verse 16 says to live in harmony with each other. It means to get along, okay? And then there's another one that says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good, okay? Um, we wait for Jesus, but Jesus didn't just put us in the back seat and said, stay quiet and wait, okay? He wants us to show his love and live his way while we wait, okay? What an adventure, right? Our entire lives are an adventure. Um, and God gives us everything that we need. Um, Simeon and Anna could have gotten bored and they could have got given up waiting for Jesus, but they didn't. They prayed and they followed God's leading, obviously, because they showed up at the temple that day, right? If they hadn't showed up, they would have missed it. Let's follow their example and wait for Jesus. All right? All right. So, Merry Christmas to you. Hope you enjoy this week and this time off. And if you ever need anything or want to share with me, uh, be sure to get a hold of me. Um, the church knows how to get a hold of me. Um, actually, I can give you my phone number, 517-398-1099.
You can always call me and share with me anything that you learn or anything that you would like me to pray for you for. I would love to do that because this is what I do. One of the things, just one of the things that I do while I wait, and I would love to love on you. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.